Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with the one and only Dan Hardy. Thanks for your time. Um, we have a couple of questions for you. First of all, congrats on becoming uh, the new head of fighting fighters operations. Tell us a bit about your new tasks and responsibilities in that role. So uh, my job is for the European fighters. Uh, I'm, I'm looking to sign fighters and match them on the cards, make sure that we've got exciting fights and fair brackets, fair matchups for all the fighters, uh, and to make sure that I'm finding the best fighters in Europe. That's the goal. I want to find the best fighters in Europe and then send them over to America to win those world titles over there. That's the plan. And, and you know, we've got so many good fighters, so many good gyms in Europe. Every single country has something to offer, and it's my job now to go and find it. And since you're scouting young talents, talents, uh, what do you look for special? What convinces you in young talents? You know, strengths and weaknesses. I don't know. You know, Keep a special I, eye on. Yeah, you know, the, the most important thing for me. I'm looking for those last three fights. I want to see good performances, not necessarily wins, because people get better from losses as well. I want to see good performances, and I want to see consistency. I want to see people that show up, they make weight, they're good conditioned, and then they fight hard. That's the most important thing for me. And, and the thing is, you know, these fighters have got opportunities in front of them. I want to make sure that they can fight two months and then two months and then two months so they can stay in this competition and win that hundred thousand uh, we all know you have a very very successful uh, background as a fighter back in the, back in the days with that PFL format be, uh, would that be something interesting for you? Yes, it would. You know, the, the best thing about the PFL format is that you, you're guaranteed competition, right? These guys know if they win tomorrow night that they, they are in Paris on September 30th and they know who they're fighting. You know, that's the biggest thing. For me, it was staying active. It was being able to find opponents regularly, fighters that would pull out, they would disappear. It would be very frustrating. Yeah. But this opportunity and the $100,000 at the end of the year, it keeps people coming to these fights. So yeah, I would have loved this when I was younger. Talking about your career, uh, if you take a flashback, what was the biggest challenge in your career? Let it be maybe a hard fight camp or whatever, or a main event, or I don't know. You know, I, I had, there are two particular ones that stand out to me. Um, in the GSP training camp, I lost my grandfather four weeks before the fight. And it was like the emotion of the world title and fighting GSP, and then, you know, uh, you know, losing my grandfather was, was incredibly difficult for me to do. But then I would say the next most difficult thing was losing four fights in a row and then coming back and winning and beating a friend of mine as well to, to get that win back. Great. Um, how has uh, the, the MMA sport evolved since you retired? If you look at it, it how do you describe the uh, evolution right now? You know, the, the, the biggest evolution are these young fighters. They don't have the gaps in between their game, right? I was a kickboxer. I learned some wrestling. I learned some jujitsu, and I had to go from one to the next to the next in my head. These guys learn it all together. They can punch you and take you down and beat you up and choke you out. And it's just one thing. It's like one style of martial arts. Yeah. And, and, and back in my day, it was all still very separated. So to see these young fighters be able to do the whole thing is incredible. Nice. Yeah, let's to make a raw cut, giving you a buzzword, Jake Paul. Is that an option for you? I would fight Fighting? Jake Paul, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Especially if he beats Nate Diaz up, because I'd be really upset about that. Uh, and I think he might as well, that's I the agree. thing, right? Like, I love <laughs> Nate, I love the Diaz brothers, but I feel like his style, I feel like his vulnerability and his age and the battle battles yeah. that he's been in, I feel like Jake Paul might catch him and really hurt him. And then if he wants to step in here, absolutely we'll be in. If we look on MMA in Europe, especially maybe in Germany, do you see there any progress, evolution? compared to back then? Oh, young athletes. 100%, yeah. I mean, you know, Leon's a good example. Leon Edwards is a really good example. Like you go into uh, Renegade and you see Leon, who's the world champion, training with young fighters that are almost as competitive, right? Imagine being like 17, 18 years old. Like we've got Lorena Cabero here, right? She's training alongside Anatoly yeah, Ball and Christina same. Breuer. She's got really good fighters to work with. It's going to make her so much better. And then, you know, Gyms like like we've got in uh, we've got Spitfire gym here. We've got Farbod fighting. I know that gym is stacked with talent, which which is going to make him better. And if he wins, it's going to open the door for the rest of his gym. Maybe last question for you: Can you give us three names of prospects you would recommend to keep an eye on? <sighs> um, three prospects to keep an eye on: yeah. Chanel Dyer. She's a, a female flyweight from the UK, trained by Brad Pickett. Um, Alexander Luster from uh, uh, Gelsenkirchen, very, very talented fighter, seven and one. Um, who else? Um, Valdrimistrefi is a heavyweight, trained by Peter Zabotta. 
representing Germany and Switzerland, another really, really good heavyweight. I'm hoping to sign him soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much.